As the popularity of music-based rhythm games continues to grow, two recent releases are taking to the stage, Activision's Guitar Hero 3 and EA's Rock Band. Now, it's no secret I'm a big fan of the Guitar Hero franchise, but going into this review of the third in the series, subtitled Legends of Rock, I was worried that some of the magic and spark that made the first two games strike a chord with gamers was going to be lost in the hands of a new developer, Neversoft, best known for their Tony Hawk games. I had the chance to wail away on the PS3, 360, and Wii versions, and after only playing a few songs, I was back on the stairway to heaven. Any fan of the series is immediately going to be right at home with this installment. But for the uninitiated, the gameplay has you strumming away to various songs using a wireless guitar, but more on that issue later. The guitar has five colored fret buttons, a strum bar, and a whammy bar, and the challenge is to press the right combination of fret buttons while strumming to the beat. The developer was smart enough not to tinker too much with the proven formula created by Harmonix, coincidentally enough the developer of Rock Band, which we'll get to in a minute. So at its core the gameplay is unchanged, but what gamers do get is an impressive and extensive set list, a few graphical tweaks, some interesting albeit underwhelming boss battles, and finally online play. The track list itself is an impressive lineup of classic, alternative, punk, and modern rock. Essentially, this list provides something for all taste in music, and songs from artists ranging from A to ZZ Top all make appearances, whether as cover tunes or this time around performed by the original artist. You'll notice some visual changes on screen during performances, like a note street counter. But clearly, there was a certain level of if it ain't broken, don't fix it mentality behind this title, and that was probably a smart move. All of the modes you are used to are in the game, with the solo career mode being where you will spend most of the time. There are some new animated cutscenes in an attempt to give the game some personality and an semblance of a storyline, but you'll find yourself skipping through them just to get back to grinding your axe. New this year, however, is a co-op career mode, basically the same as solo, but allowing you to do so with a friend on bass or rhythm guitar. And as of this writing, only the 360 version will allow a co-op quick play, but that's a patch that you'll have to download from Xbox Live. Another new addition is battle mode, which turns into boss battles at certain points during your career progression. In this mode, you'll go up against the likes of Slash from Guns N' Roses and Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine. Your use of star power now becomes various attacks against your opponent as you duel your way to string picking supremacy. The ultimate goal is to make your opponent fail before the song is over. It's actually neat to go up against these legendary grinders, but ultimately simply serves as a cute and pointless distraction from the rest of the game. More importantly, the game finally has online play. You'll get to play all the same offline modes, but sad to say there is no online co-op career mode. Of course, each of the three versions have their own types of online service, with Xbox Live still being our favorite simply because of their perfected user-friendly interface and friends list. Also of note, the Wii version will not offer up downloadable tracks. And for any doubters out there, we experienced no lag on any of the consoles while playing online. Now onto the subject of the wireless guitars. We mentioned earlier all three versions of the game now feature a wireless version of the guitar controller. And while we were excited about the new design and not being tethered to our consoles, we have experienced several issues with two of the controllers we played with, the PS3 and the 360 versions. Although not officially confirmed, the problem seems to be related to the new detachable neck design causing unresponsive fret buttons. This seems to be a widespread problem with various versions of the games, with blogs and web postings all listing the same issues. While there has been no official comment on the recurring problem, my sources have confirmed that they are aware of the problems gamers are having and are looking into the issues. So for now, my wireless guitar is in the closet in hopes of some sort of easy fix, and I'm once again tethered to the console with my Explorer controller, which also works with the game. Here's hoping Activision and Red Octane do right by us loyal Guitar Hero fans and offer up some sort of easy fix to this widespread problem sometime soon. I should also note that the game's difficulty level seems ramped up a bit more but hammer-ons and pull-offs also seem easier to do. I guess there was hopes of finding a balance for experienced gamers looking for a challenge and gamers new to the series. With its extensive and diversified song list, new online play and co-op modes, the third installment is a welcomed addition to the venue, and while there has not been much done to advance the series' core gameplay, that doesn't make this game any less fun to play. We just have to deduct a point for some poor guitar design issues that slipped through the cracks during the QA process. Guitar Hero 3 is out now. It's rated for ages 13 and up, and Texas Gamer gives it a 3.5 out of 5.